So I want to talk today about the creative process. Um, this is specifically from a photographer's point of view, but if you're involved in any other walk of life, any other profession, any other job, um, you might find this interesting as well because I think there's value in this for all of us. For me, creativity kind of comes in two different ways. Uh, sometimes I have a very clear idea of an image that I want to produce and uh, I then set out to plan how I'll actually photograph the subject to, to create the image that, that I want. Other times it's much more evolutionary than that um, and that that's the part of the process I want to talk about today is that, that kind of evolutionary side where you maybe begin with the germ of an idea and it eventually develops and grows, takes on a life of its own and you end up with something coherent that makes sense that's that's been creative. Um, the example I want to use is one from fairly recently and the context of this is, is how do you go about approaching photographing something which is very well known, very often photographed and usually seen in, in one particular way. Uh, and that, that's what I was faced with because um, a couple of weeks back um, I was going to Abbey Road in London, uh, not of my own volition really, my wife is part of the rock choir and she was going to record in the famous Abbey Road studios with them. I wasn't allowed in, which <laughs> was a bit galling, um, but I thought well I'll, I'll be there, I'll be around and uh, we'll take the camera and try and get some, some photographs around there. Obviously the first thing that came to mind is the cover of the famous Beatles Abbey Road album and the pedestrian crossing here. And I decided, well, I, I, you can't go there and kind of not photograph the pedestrian crossing, but I'm conscious of the fact that throughout the years, many people, Beatles fans, whatever, have, have walked across that crossing, had their photograph taken walking across it. That is a very familiar way of doing that, of photographing it. And I decided I really have to do this a bit differently. I don't want to be just part of that big mix. So how do I take something that is iconic, very familiar, very often photographed and do something different with it? So I spent a bit of time thinking about that before we went and the only thought that I had was to try and do a, a time a, a long exposure, a kind of timed long exposure. Um, so I packed uh, ND filters, etc., and uh, thought, well, well, we'll have a go at that, see what happens. I don't know what will, uh, but at least I'll have had a go at doing something a bit differently. Now, where this comes from, where this approach comes from, is is a an attitude I have. It's it's a, it's captured in a, a little tagline I use in, in my business which is seeing the familiar differently. And I think that that's key to being creative sometimes. Is you, you, you have familiar subjects, you, you have things that you know well, but how can you see them differently? And that I think is the key that, that unlocks a, a kind of creative process. However, in this instance, um, this was taking a photograph of a, a well-known uh, landmark, a very famous landmark. And I wanted to kind of honour it, respect it, um, but also kind of come up with something that, that was a, a, a bit different. So getting there, the, the, the recording was at uh, something like, I think my wife went in 9, 9.15 on a Sunday morning already at that time there were queues of tourists on the crossing getting their photographs taken on the crossing there was quite a bit of traffic going back and forward uh, I scouted around there were no really good 
uh, vantage points other than one which was on the opposite side of Abbey Road from the studios kind of looking into the the crossing um, and there was a nice convenient low wall there I'd taken my gorilla pod with me rather than a, a big tripod um, mainly because we were using public transport I just didn't fancy lugging a big tripod around and also I thought well <sighs> If it's busy, which it turned out to be, it, it's more of a hazard and uh, I, I just didn't want to have that that risk. So I set up the gorilla pod on a little wall, that was convenient. Uh, it meant I could shield it, protect it from accidental bumps and things, set it up to look into the zebra crossing. And uh, just kind of right of frame was the, the, the first gate post uh, of the entrance to the Abbey Road Studios. So we had that. In, in context and I, I, I basically just fired off uh, a bunch of shots on uh, a time exposure the way I did this I, I thought well how long of a time exposure do I want and I thought something maybe in the region of five six seconds might be might be interesting um, and I could vary it from there so so I I basically worked backwards from if I set an ISO of 100 if I go for a reasonably narrow aperture, so f11 thereabouts, um, let's work backwards to what kind, what strength of ND filter do I need to create um, an exposure time of something around uh, six, seven seconds, uh, five or six seconds. So I did that, set up, took a few shots, uh, tried to get different things happening, people on the crossing, people moving across it, people relatively stationary on it for a second or two and then they moved. It's a busy road so you, people couldn't afford to spend long on the crossing getting their photos taken. Um, I tried to grab moments when the crossing was empty but there was traffic uh, going back and forward. I probably spent a good half hour maybe 40 minutes uh, doing that and got a bunch of shots and uh, didn't really have much idea of what I would have until I got home. Uh, got the images up on the computer screen and had a look at them and uh, wow one of the things that really leapt out to me which I hadn't seen before just going through the sequence of shots was that one group had come over uh, the crossing. I've got a couple of shots of them. One is they kind of exited the crossing and, and then a couple of people gathered on the pavement. They, they became more in focus. And the, 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 the gentleman had bare feet. Uh, so he had clearly been imitating uh, the Paul McCartney uh, pose on, on the crossing. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. A lot of the other shots, the, the, there were there wasn't a lot in it that, that I really kind of liked but this one shot stood out to me um, and I thought you know that this looks like kind of ghostly just the effect of the time exposure that I would caught the people standing relatively still but there was enough movement there was people coming off the crossing so there, there, there were different shadows and echoes and ghostly effects going on um, and at the far side of the crossing there was a, a group of, of people waiting their turn to come on uh, who'd been moving about a little bit but I felt in the end for the composition they were a distraction so I spent a bit of time in Photoshop just, just taking them out, cleaning it up um, and uh, it just kind of worked away a bit a combination of work in, in Lightroom and in Photoshop really just to, to refine the composition and end up in a position that I was happy with lots of adjustments to contrast just to bring out different uh, effects within it I then left it uh, for a, a couple of days um, and came back to it looked at it again I, I suddenly was struck with the idea of the, the, the bare feet the ghosting images um, and I remembered uh, at the time the album came out 1969 I think it was there were rumours going around that because Paul McCartney was photographed with bare feet this was some kind of hint that, or suggestion that he had actually died uh, I mean, clearly nonsense um, but that, I remember that rumour going around and that again had me thinking in this realm of ghosts 
um, and so on. And I thought, you know, over the years, many people, uh, many fans have crossed that crossing, uh, getting their photograph taken, um, and there, there was a sense of their kind of ghostly presence, <laughs> if you like. Um, I, I, and I, I thought, well, the, the, the image that I've got here of these people, they almost represent people now, people in the past over the years who have crossed over there uh, wanting to kind of recreate their take on that famous photograph. And uh, I then thought, you know, that, that there is a story there that, that, that there's a, a, a kind of a, an honouring of the people who've, who've done that over the years, the fans who've done that. And, and also, I guess, the original shot taken by uh, Ian McMillan was the photographer who did it uh, with the Beatles uh, originally. And um, I then thought, well, the, the ghosts actually go back to the Beatles themselves uh, in that original image. So uh, I took a... a a photograph of this very album cover, uh, actually just with my phone, um, and then carefully uh, selected the Beatles out of it, and then ghosted them in um, to the the zebra crossing, really to to kind of honour the fact that that's where it started, uh, that's what it started from, and if we're going to have ghosts of Abbey Road, it really had to include the Beatles in, in that sense. Um, I also um, photographed the back, uh, took the, the Abbey Road lettering here and um, put that into the image as well so that on the, the crossing you, you've got Abbey Road and then below that the actual writing on the crossing that says look right and there's a, an arrow uh, and that's obviously to remind pedestrians that if they're crossing there you've got to look right that's where the traffic's coming from but that also happens to point in the direction of the Abbey Road Studios and I, I just thought that that came together nicely as a creative process and, and it resulted in me seeing the familiar differently and sometimes when you, you deliberately step back from something and say well can I see this differently? How can I see this differently? You end up in a kind of a creative process that that, that can end in a fairly new, different sort of place. Uh, so that's the illustration uh, using uh, that photograph that uh, for myself I've called Ghosts of Abbey Road. But I think that, you know, no matter what walk of life you're in, just having the capacity sometimes to step back and say, how can I see this familiar thing differently is an approach that can open up uh, creative answers to maybe sometimes intransigent or difficult problems um, and bring a, a fresh look on things. So with that, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this interesting and helpful, please do click like. That helps uh, with the channel. Subscribe if you would like uh, more of this content and uh, click on the little bell icon so that you're notified when I upload new content. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.